You're listening to The Interview Show with Seth Goldstein on the phillytech.org netcast network. Thank you to our sponsors, aweber.com, wistia.com, Zoho Mail, and getflywheel.com. And we are live. Welcome to another edition of the, hang, the Hangout Show, the interview show. I'm with Mike Krupit of What Are You Of Nowadays, Mike? <laughs> I've got a number of business cards, right? So I, uh, my Trajectify is my coaching practice where I coach growth stage um, companies. Uh, Intronet is my tech startup. And um, uh-huh. I'm also with the Philadelphia New Technology Meetup. Which is an absolutely amazing meetup, and if you get the chance to go down to the, the New Tech meetup, it's incredible. I mean, right. literally, you, you draw what, 200 people, 300 people at every yep. meetup? Yeah, our, our holiday party, our holiday event, actually, because it's going to have demos and speeches, will be well over 300 people. We, we haven't even announced the lineup yet, and we've got 210 people signed up for it. I and, signed uh, up the minute you opened your mouth. And from the day I signed up. I was like, get in there fast. Yep, and, and that'll um, uh, we're already we we just this morning hit the thousand member marks. We've got a thousand people in the group after wow. only seven months. Yeah, what happens to the old one? Was there an... the the old one? The 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 gentleman who was running it moved to New York and stopped fostering it and lost his sponsors and lost his audience and basically stopped investing in it. Oh, so you guys, you you and Brad Denenberg took it over. And, and, and Corey, we, we filled the and, void, right? We built we void. built something different to fill the void that that left. Awesome, awesome. Real yeah. fast, let's thank our sponsors real fast, our sponsors, uh, AWeber, um, Wistia, and Zoho Mail, and Get Flywheel. So thank you guys for hosting, for sponsoring the phillytech.org um, netcast network, and back to Mike. So Mike, who are you? I mean, I, I, mean, I know you. We, I've known you for what, like five, six years now already, unfortunately for you, but, uh, <laughs> but I mean, you've been around the tech scene for like since the heyday, right? Yeah. Well, so I've been... Uh, I've got a career that's nearly 30 years. Um, You're started old. The, the, the <laughs> yes, unfortunately. I know, I look 29. Yeah. The, the, it's, a, it's a vegan diet. It, 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 well, that helps a lot. That helps a lot. But we won't talk about health and nutrition here. We'll talk That'll about technology show. and entrepreneurship in Philly. The, um, <clears throat> so I started my first 10 years in, um, of my career in Silicon Valley, and the last 20 years has been here in Philadelphia. Um, you know, I'm a technologist, Rick. I'm, I'm a geek, I'm a nerd, um, I'm an introvert. I, I, I'm like everyone else who has started a tech company or worked at a tech company who's much more comfortable in front of a computer. But along the way, I realized that it, you, when you're at a startup, when you're at a young company, you can't just focus on your one thing. Ultimately, you're exposed to everything from, you know, how do you order paper clips to how do you raise money to how do you hire a staff to how do you build customer service. And, and you get exposed to so many different things that I, I began to to um, really love um, not just the technology and product aspects of the business, but all the other things that go into making, you know, a, a product and service a company. And so over the course of my you know, career, I went from you know, CTO to COO to CEO and um, worked with more and more startups. Um, you know, some of them I started, some of them I just followed the founder um, you know, to the point where I'm, I'm, at the, I'm at the stage of my career where I'm now facilitating other people doing that, right? So I, my coaching practice as well as you know, what we're doing with the new technology meetup, um, we're, we're, we're creating an environment and providing the resources for people who I was, you know, 30 years ago, to do it themselves. Mm-hmm. So that, that's sort of the three-minute version of who I am. Exactly. And you, you, I mean, you, you have a background that's very rich. I mean, you worked at CD Now, weren't you the CEO of CD Now or something like I, that? When I joined C, CD Now, um, I was there. Uh, there. About 40th employee, um, I, I kind of joke it was founded by twins, and I call myself the third twin. Uh-huh. One, was the, uh, one was running technology, one was running the business, and they kind of put me in the middle of them since they didn't quite always get along. And they were twins? Uh, they were twins. Oh, wow. That's never good. And so, and now, so I moved um, after a year and a half of getting the technology to the point where we could, we could, um, we could sustain you know, holiday shopping season. You know, we were very early on in e-commerce, so we were building all our own tools and hosting all our own services. 
I then took over operations and became COO and handled customer service and product management and I mean everything except for sales and marketing. And then when we um, we decided to sell the company and sold it to Bertelsmann, Bertelsmann named me CEO. And at that point, I was running the entire operation. Wow. Well, and for people who don't know what CV Now is, because you know there's some young people that listen to this show, CV Now was essentially what would you call it? The Amazon of CDs. And for those, right. who don't know, those who don't know who CDs are, they're these discs that you put music on. You put them in a player, and it spun around sort of like a record. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, so hopefully I think everyone still remembers what a CD is, even the youngest people, but not many people yeah. buy it anymore, right? Um, and, and that's because DVDs are still around, too. Um, we're not, so we're not in a, yeah. a solely digital world, but we're, we're, we're surely close. But right, so CD Now started the, selling music the same time Amazon started selling books. We were, we, were, we were some of the pioneers in e-commerce. That's pretty cool, and, and 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 you're in Philly. You know, we have one of the, we have one of the. I won't call you grandfathers of tech, but I'll call you you know a father of tech. <laughs> you're old enough to be a grandfather of tech, but you know, you're definitely the one older, of the, the older brother of tech. Yeah. What what what, what do you call you? The elder cockers of tech. Uh, okay. There we go. There we go. So so after that, where did you go after CD now? Like. I well, so I'll, 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 I'll give you a complete rundown, right? Yeah. So. First startup in, in California was um, a, a company that had this concept of putting data onto CDs. You know, talk about CDs. Um, <laughs> Sony was putting music on CDs. We said, why can't you put data on CDs? This is pre-Windows, you know, right when the PC was first coming out to market. Um, the second company I was part of growing was, a, um, was the first full-text search engine. Again, oh, think wow. pre-internet, right? This is what we deployed in corporations and for the government, right? Um, I then came to uh, Philadelphia to uh, raise my kids on the East Coast, and I started working with with Lucinda Dunkhaf and Josh Kopelman and Marvin Weinberger over at Infonautics, and I was part of that team for a few years, um, building the leading the technology development effort. Uh, then I went to CD Now, and then um, after CD Now, I took a little bit of time off, and then I um, took over a uh, an automotive um, technology spin out from Princeton University, and we grew that for a couple of years. Oh wow! Um, and then I did a system called uh, Swap Credits, which which facilitated the swapping of books, music, movies, and video games. While again, while we were still talking about physical media. Um, Back when it was actually doable, you know. Now, yes. now there's that yeah. whole swapping of data. It's more like you're giving it and keeping it, you know. Right. Well, life was much simpler when you owned the the physical item, and we knew that that was your license for it. Now, licensing yeah. is much more complicated, right? Remember, remember those yeah. license keys where you had to go to a certain page in the book and find mm -hmm. a, a word on the third paragraph, fourth line, you know? There was a lot of innovative ways of 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 ensuring oh. that people own the stuff that they owned, right? Oh. Um, and, and then I did a, um, I, I worked for a, for a company in Bucks County for a while, um, helping them turn around a telecom company, which was kind of interesting because it was an older, profitable company that just had, whose growth had slowed down, so I helped facilitate their growth. Um, and, and at that point, what was really exciting about it was, you know, first it, it was a sole proprietorship. Um, it was an established business. It was profitable, and none of the startups were ever like that. So, <laughs> so it was a very different world. I learned really different skills. Um, and, and overcame some pretty interesting challenges, and I, then I took that to the next step in my career and, and founded an incubator, Novatorium, mm -hmm. which helped me then take some of that learning of my startups combined with running a business, and then we formed the incubator. From the incubator, I went to Real Food Works with Lucinda Dunkhaf, and we spent a couple of years trying to, to, to build a, a, a system that, that markets and sells um, healthy, convenient food. And um, when, when, when sort of that didn't stick, we, um, I decided to to step aside from doing you know my own startups and and work with um, and build a um, a coaching program to to help other entrepreneurs get their businesses grown. And that's and that's trajectify, right? That's trajectify, right? It's, yeah, you have to be if you're going to be a startup or a coach or a startup, you have to have a really hard name to pronounce. Yeah, <laughs> well, you, that, wait, that that'll be a whole different podcast, right? But naming your business is is really a lot more challenging today than it than it oh perhaps my, was, was decades exactly. ago. Yeah, exactly. It's running. You're running out of things. Yeah. You know. Also, you also do intranet, right? So intranet, right? So intranet. So along the way, I, I said I wasn't going to do another startup, and then of course along, the, it's it's an addiction, right? Yeah. You know, startups are, are 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 an illness that that some of us suffer, and um. So, so along the way of, of my building my coaching practice, I ran into an entrepreneur uh, named Martin Babinick, who's the founder of Trinet. 
Um, and Martin, uh, Martin had um, just exited Trinet. They had gone public. And not a quick exit, right? He had been building it for 26 years. Um, wow, that's a really was long exit. To, yeah, it was it, it was long, but it was super successful. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I'm sure many of your your viewers and listeners have heard of Trinet um, and mm -hmm. might even be Trinet customers. But Martin wanted to build a system that helped facilitate introductions, and he he. You know, he and I just sort of hit it off right away, and we wanted to work with each other, and we really loved the idea because being connected is really, in today's day and age, is is really what it takes to to be successful. Um, Absolutely. You know, look, look at look at what we're doing, right? And and look at how many people are going to be watching this podcast, this this um, this, this uh, video, and and commenting on it, and interacting about it, and building relationships, and, and you know, so it's we've got content, we've got community. Um, there's a lot of information out there that sort of creates these connections and a lot of relationships that create these connections and sort of intranet looks to bring a lot of that together to sort of help to help us manage the the uh, the challenges in, 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 in staying connected in this you know super uber connected world that we live in absolutely absolutely um, so alright now to switch gears a little bit since you are very ingrained in the Philadelphia and surrounding area tech scene where do you see Philadelphia going? I mean, I, I started Philly Tech that work to kind of help bring attention to Philadelphia. Where do you see it going in, like, in the next year, two years, five years, ten years? Well, you know, look, I think things in Philadelphia move slow, right? Mm -hmm. um, I, I, maybe it's an East Coast thing because we have seasons and it, it sort of hinders our progress, right? Um, the, the fact is that... that um, you know, we, we saw this resurge. I mean, let me take a step back. You know, in the late '90s, we see this this, this big bubble in, in in technology, and and then sort of when it when it burst in the early 2000s, Philadelphia seemed to retreat a lot. And and, and frankly, you know, I don't think it retreated a lot. I think it, it really wasn't as far along as we thought it was. Right? There wasn't a lot of capital here. Right? The capital in Philadelphia is relatively old. There weren't a, there wasn't a, a ton of talent. There was just a few high flyers, right? There was a small number of high flyers, you know, Half.com and GSI Commerce and um, VerticalNet and CDNow, right? But there were there were a few dozen. There weren't hundreds, right? Mm -hmm. In part because it took a lot of money and technology to actually launch a product back in those days. Um, you know, so so things got quiet again, um, which which wasn't a big shocker because they had never really been that noisy, and and then there was this renaissance, this resurgence. You know, five six years ago, um, you know, when I look at where we are today compared to five six years ago, it's not that much farther ahead, right? Um, we we still, uh, you know, there's a lot of growth that remains to to happen here, um, because the roots in technology and entrepreneurship um, aren't sufficiently deep, right? Philadelphia isn't known as a technology hub, right? How you know, other than Comcast, perhaps, which which one my question how you know, how, how much of a technology force are there. Mm -hmm. There really aren't a lot of heavy-duty tech companies here. Oh, hey, sorry about that. I just lost you because the... Um... I still see you, so just keep yeah, on talking. <laughs> right. uh, um, where are we? Sorry, I, I can't see you, but I'll keep talking. Um, keep Google, on talking. Google, Google Calendar uh, popped, a, popped a, the window on top of you and disappeared. Um, so, so the, the technology... Um, we, we're not known as a force in technology, um, and it's, it, that's not going to happen quickly, right? That takes time, right? We've got, we've got to um, break down the fences, the barriers between the universities and, and the technology community. We've got to break down the barriers between corporate America and the technology and the, and the entrepreneurial technology community. We've got to get the capital in place. We've got to we've got to break down some of our own cultural barriers, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we still have this these arguments about city versus suburb. Um, oh, yeah, you know, we, yeah. we you know, and and you know, it, it's a valid discussion, right? But we've got to we've got to do something, right? We've got to say, all right, well, hey, everybody, you know, let's be a a, a dense city centric, um, you know, metropolitan sort of. Of a tech community, or let's be a region and and spread out. But but in in the meantime, all of these debates that we have and fences that we have that we that we've erected slow progress down. So I think Philly is headed in the right direction. Um, but over the next few years, I still think it looks like the past few years. I think progress here is going to be slow um, because the challenges that we face are, are are hard. Right? If you if you leave a university today, if you graduate. With a uh, with, with a respectable degree, and we have a lot of respectable universities here. What do you do with it, 
right? Mm -hmm. Where are the, you, you, not everyone's going to go to a startup, right? Most people won't go to a startup. So where are you going to go, right? What kind of jobs are there available in in finance or investment banking or or management or or um, 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 administration, right? The, 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 how do you take these advanced degrees? And these 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 white collar skills and deploy them in a city that that, that where you can have the security of having a having a, a job a job um, worthy of of your credentials. Um, not enough of those jobs exist, and that that's holding us back. And that's not a again that's not a simple problem to solve. Mm -hmm. I hear you. I hear you. I mean, I, and that's what I've been I've been start, you know struggling with. I mean, I'm, we're on Doylestown. You know, we're an hour from the city, and we right. have bricks we have bricks simple up here. We have a lot of I mean. Doylestown itself is, is is its own beast in its own right. You know, Doylestown has its own little text center here. But like I, I've, I've talked to a number of people, th you know, about how Philadelphia and the suburbs can become more of a it's not, not so much as Silicon Valley, but if you look at Silicon Valley, it's not San Francisco. It's from San Francisco, even Sonoma County, all the way down to Mountain View, and below a little bit. It, yeah. it, it's region. I mean, so I mean, Silicon Alley, if you want to use these buzz terms, New York City is New York City, but New York City is a beast. I mean, New York City, is, it could be its own state. Right, but New York City, you know, New York City's tech scene rose very quickly, mm -hmm. and and the challenge with with quick growth is you could have a big crash and burn. Right, Silicon Valley will never crash and burn. Its growth was very. Um, drawn out over a very long period of time and the, you know the big resurgence we see in the city of San Francisco right now all of that talent and wealth that has migrated to San Francisco um, it doesn't define Silicon Valley right that's sort of the image that we have of it, and, they, right? and, they, and they had a bus too and remember the big dot com bus was, was everywhere yeah, but it wasn't huge right it wasn't yeah. it wasn't big they they recovered very nicely right you know in mm -hmm. fact they're stronger today than than we were when I was working there 20 years ago, you know, New York might have a bust. Look, Philly's never going to have a bust. We're not going to have the boom. We're not going to have the bust. Um, you <laughs> know, we, 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 can, we can look at all these other communities and try to learn from them, but, but you know, the, the fact is our, our, our talent pool, our geography, our history, our culture, our attitude is different than any of those other cities, so we've just got to establish a, t a, a tech community that, that fits who we are. You know, we're kind of scrappy and kind of, you know, with with a scrappy with a history. We have we have history, right. So there's we're 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 there's we're we're deeply rooted in some strong core values, and 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 you don't see that as much in other in other cities, in New York, and Boston, and and Silicon Valley, and Austin, and and those values, you know, while it makes our progress slow, it's it sort of, you know, um, I don't know. I, I I the thing I love most about Philly is it, it's filled with good guys. Right? Yeah, you know, all the guys. It really, really is. Here. I mean the fact the fact that I can get Mike Krupit on the show. Well, I mean we know each other for a while now, but I'm saying like I've been able to reach out to people and get this whole podcast network started. It's because a lot of people are like, "That sounds like fun. Let's try it." You know. So, yep. Mike, where can people find you online? Um, so, I, I uh, was the best way to find me. LinkedIn is always a good place to reach out to me. Um, uh, I have a website right now for you know my personal website is krupit.com, k-r-u-p-i-t.com. But I am going to transition that over the next couple months to trajectify.com. How do you spell um, that? So, yep. So, 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 krupit trajectify.com is a landing page. Krupit.com is a is an old biography, right? <laughs> um, uh, but but I can always be reached by email. Always you know, on Twitter, actually. Twitter is a great way to reach me, um, as you've been doing, right? Um, at at mkrupit at m k r u p i t. And you're Mike, not Michael, right? I, I, I mean, formally I'm Michael, but I, I typically save that for my wife and mother, so I know when I'm when I'm in trouble. <laughs> and most everyone else calls me Mike. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, so when you look look for Mike Krupit. It's usually it's easier to find you because it's Mike Krupit. Yeah. The good thing, if you Google me, Google doesn't care Mike or Michael. They, 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 they're, find they're pretty you. smart about that, yeah. Awesome, Mike. Well, thanks for being on the show. And right, thanks for having me, Seth. Exactly, and um, get back to work. <laughs> All right, good luck. Take All care. Right.